Hi there, I'm Dr. Albert Chung, and welcome to your friendly proctologist. Thank you so much for being with me today. This channel is about helpful, useful, and real information that you won't find anywhere else on the internet. And the whole purpose is also to help you learn about your health. So, today marks the beginning of a new disclaimer in the description box. Because I want to make sure that you are all safe when you're listening to my videos. I want to help you understand how this needs to work so that you can see a professional on your own. Someone like me who can make a proper diagnosis and therefore get your treatment on the road to recovery. In addition, the description has links as well which will contain the items that I recommend. And when I talk about hemorrhoids, for example, the creams are down there. And so that if you would like to purchase them, they greatly help out the channel and I appreciate that. So let's get to today's topic. The topic is, or the question is, Dr. Chung, can you give me your opinion about the hemorrhoidectomy surgery recovery? Another Excellent, excellent question. I'm telling you, people, you guys are only giving me good questions to answer, and I appreciate that. So this topic is actually a big one, okay? For me, the way I um, handle a recovery is different than probably any doctor that you've ever heard of, okay? Um, I make sure my patients are... Well, they have somebody to coach them and to really guide them through this tough time. And I think that's the most important part. I will touch on more of that later, but let's get through some of the other basic stuff first, okay? So I've covered the hemorrhoid surgery in previous videos, and I don't want to make this video too long. Um, let's talk about right after the surgery, okay? What are the things you should expect and how, how can you deal? What are some strategies? That's what you're really looking for, right? Okay, so pain is the number one problem with this recovery, okay? So pain control with medications and creams um, and relaxation is of utmost importance to help keep that pain level down. So the pain is the worst on the day of surgery or the next day after. Usually your surgeon, which is I'm sure is pretty standard throughout the entire world, they give you an injection around the area of the surgery where you can target these nerves that are responsible for sensation in the anus and these medications, at least the ones that I use, they last about six to eight hours. And the pain should be zero, goose egg, okay? That's how effective these medications can be. And so that's an excellent time for you to start getting those anesthetic medications where they put you to sleep to get them to wear off, you know, get you some sleep um, immediately after surgery, catch up on some rest so that now you're ready for the real recovery to begin. Now, another thing that can be helpful is another injection called Expirel, okay? This is something that is recommended for use after a surgery like a hemorrhoidectomy. And I offer this to all of my patients. Why? Because it's injected at the same time as the other pain medication, but this one can last up to two to three days, okay? We're talking 48 to 72 hours, not just six to eight, like I said. The difference being, in terms of your pain level, it's about 50 to 60% um, coverage. So you maybe feel about 40% of the pain, but compared to what you could be feeling, which is, you know, the maximum height in the beginning days of the recovery, 
this can be a very, very helpful thing to get you through. And if you could miss the worst parts, why not, right? Um, and then of course, getting it covered by your insurance or how to pay for it, that's something that's out of the scope of this video, but know that this medication can be offered to you. So ask about it. But I always offer that to my patients because I would want it, okay? So those injections are working in the very beginning. And like I said, the beginning of the recovery is the worst. And so it starts at the maximum on the day of surgery. And then it slowly creeps down day by day. Okay, and that is the normal trend. Of course, you have to poop after recovery and anything that rubs against the anus where the surgery was, that's going to give a bump on your pain level, right? So in reality, in actuality, the pain levels kind of go slowly down, but you have this hump, these hills that kind of come uh, however often you go poop, okay? So pain control is those injections, but also pain pills. And also there's many ways you can give pain pills, okay? And in my opinion, the pain needs to be controlled so that you're not sitting and laying down your bathroom floor, crying yourself to sleep, trying to get the time to pass in your bed, just incapacitated. That I believe is a recovery that's not optimized. I think that person who's suffering from pain that much needs to get help. And I offer multiple different ways of giving pain medications, different types of pain medications to help with that. Because if you're not functional, then Believe me, it's going. It can be. It's just way harder than it needs to be, and it's. I believe it's not an adequate treatment. Okay. What else in addition? Well, there's creams that can numb the area, like Recticare. That it's in the description below. There's also. I also prescribe diltiazem, and you're like, whoa, Doctor Chung, that's for anal fissures. You're. <laughs> you're crazy. But I'll tell you that this medication, like I said, it relaxes the muscle and that's what we need in this type of situation. After the hemorrhoid surgery, your bottom end is squeezing the life out of itself and you can't help but squeeze. You think you may not be, but trust me, you are because the anus is hating its life right now, okay? And so that cream can be helpful to force some some relaxation even if it's a little bit i think it's a big win because and another thing you think it's for fissures right well what do we have after a hemorrhoid surgery a bunch of big cuts or fissures that someone like me made so i force the fissure upon yourself and you have to heal these fissures that i've induced upon you and i think that diltiazem makes a lot a lot of sense okay um, I don't know if because of diltiazem the wounds heal faster, but I do know that many patients do derive benefit from using that cream. Okay, what else can you use? Well, there's always ibuprofen, Tylenol, those other pain medications. But again, got to be under the guidance of a surgeon, a doctor who can let you know how much to take, how often to take, what's the maximum, what are the risks, and things like that, okay? I'm not going to talk about each individual medication now because I think, again, to make this video way too long. What is, so that's first thing, pain control, okay? And that's not all you, that's a coordination effort between you and your surgeon, okay? All right, so what else do you want help with? Okay, well, I think that another thing is with the first bowel movement, okay? The reason why it's so tough is because, number one, your poop can get hard. You can get constipated from all the medications you've been given. If you are under general anesthesia, those gases and medications that they give you, those slow your intestines down so your poop gets dried up. What else? Pain medication, if you, especially if some narcotics, 
which very often is prescribed, that will make your poop hard, right? So if your poop is hard, you're going to have to push harder. And if you got to push harder, that means that you've got to relax more as well, okay? And those things typically don't play well together. And if it's going to be painful as it passes through, no matter what, soft bowel movements will be much easier and much less painful than a hard poop. Believe me, it's something that I'm very, very, I stress with my patients. So what do I do? What's a strategy? I tell people to start stool softeners two days before the surgery. Okay, I want things to be working and running through so that when all these medications are hitting you, you're still going to be protected, okay? What if you're taking stool softeners already and still you got an issue with pooping? Well, then a call to your surgeon is definitely necessary. Don't wait five days. If you haven't pooped in two days, I would call your surgeon, okay? Because it's much easier to bail yourself out earlier rather than five days out. Because five days out, the poop has definitely made its home. It is just blocks of bricks. It can be. And then the only way sometimes to get these things out is actually to dig them out manually. Okay. Yeah, you can try an enema, but I'm telling you, a finger, enema, anything put inside your bottom end is, oh my gosh, it's not going to be pretty. And it's just certainly something that you can prevent if you knew this information, right? If you haven't pooped in a day, I think that's fair to wait another 24 hours. But with me, if patients are concerned, I tell them to call me, okay? Because it's such an area of huge concern, right? Everyone, even before the surgery, everyone is really, really anxious about going for that first time. And so I just, you know, I give you some reassurance. I give you a plan. I even fine tune things if you're really concerned, you know? Sometimes if you're really concerned about things being stopped up, you've got some symptoms going on. Well, then we've got to take that into account is my opinion, okay? But definitely overall message, definitely by two days if you have not pooped, give your surgeon a call so that you can get helpful hints tips to get you to poop rather than waiting five, four, five, six days, okay? It's just, it's just very preventable in my opinion. Okay, so stool softeners are important before surgery in my opinion and after surgery, of course, because it's not just about the first poop, but every single poop. You want to make sure that every single one of those has soft poop passing by, right? That's going to be the ideal situation. Okay, what's another helpful hint for the surgery? Activity, okay? I believe that laying in bed all day, incapacitated, or just laying around uh, is not correct, okay? It's not good for you. You need to be moving around, walking, you can climb stairs, those are all safe to do. And spending some time, spending some time outside, okay? Even if it's just a few laps around your house, or you know, you drive to the mall, someone takes you to the mall, and you just, you know, take a walk in the mall. It's those are all great things. Why is it good? Prevents pneumonia, prevents blood clots, and the biggest thing, it gets your intestines moving so that you can avoid constipation, okay? And those things will help you stay out of the hospital from complications of the surgery and also will help you to keep your poop regular. What's another helpful hint? Okay, diet. What should I eat after or you know during a recovery period? Okay, the shorter answer is there is no standard diet. In my opinion, I think that what's helpful is on the day of surgery and the maybe two, three days, keep it bland. Don't eat anything crazy heavy like a 12 ounce steak. Um, a lot of food with tons and tons of spices, okay? Keep it more on the blander side. If you like soups or that you enjoy, definitely have that fridge stocked with their soups. 
you know, you know, some protein like chicken. Um, but I would not also lay on the fiber at this point either, okay? Uh, I did a video on low residue diet. That may be helpful for you to keep your bowel movement smaller and also to avoid the big, bulky, and possibly constipated poops from tons of fiber, okay? But I like the bland and easier diets, more liquids than anything, because it makes you feel better, number one, okay? It makes you feel like, okay, I'm, I'm making it easy on myself, you know? And I believe that your stomach and your intestines are also slowed down by the anesthesia from the medication to put you to sleep. That Sometimes your intestines need a little time to get themselves revved up so that they can start functioning at the normal speed. So sometimes um, one common thing I hear is, you know, I feel really bloated. I was so hungry after the surgery, went out, got some McDonald's, and like, oh man, I feel bloated right now. And that's what I mean when the anesthesia medications slow your intestines down. The stomach expanded to hold all the food, but all the small intestine, everything afterwards was just not moving. It was just being really slow. And that can take some time. So keep your meals smaller, eat more frequently. Maybe you need to eat like four to six meals a day, small meals, just taking bite size here and there. And then once these things start to feel more normal, you get more comfortable, then you you're definitely should bring back your diet. Okay, what you normally eat. So we need that nutrition as well. You need your body to get back into the groove of things. Okay, what's some other helpful hints here? Well, I think that sits baths are excellent. And I think the main thing is relaxation. Allowing that bottom end to soak. Let your mind calm down and give that time to cleanse things. But it can be very helpful for people to allow that pain level to come down because the muscles are letting go, okay? So another strategy is making sure that you have all the supplies with you for dressing changes, okay? You're gonna have a lot of fluid coming out of your bottom end, you know? Usually there's cuts that, or stitches that are coming all the way to the outside skin that you can see. So those will always give off some blood, some yellowish liquid, could be like thick white stuff at times too, even sometimes green, okay? If you put the gauze right on top of the anus here, right? Just fold it in half and then put it right on top of your anus. Open those cheeks as wide as you can. That way it can soak everything there. Let the butt cheeks close and it should hold that gauze between your butt cheeks as well too. And usually you don't need any tape. And then just pull up your clothes over that. And that way you can stay fresh. The buttocks, the skin, it stays dry and you avoid irritation that way as well. What's another huge and helpful tip? I think this is the most important in my opinion. Okay, is having a doctor that or a surgeon that you feel comfortable with. Okay, read the reviews for the surgeon that you're going to have surgery with. Okay, try to find someone that when you meet that person, you feel like that person is going to be there to help you. Um, that I feel is the most important part of the recovery is the mental aspect. Because when it comes to our anus, the anxiety levels, the worry, the stress comes way, way high. And so how many questions, how often do questions come up with this kind of surgery recovery? 100% everybody has something that they're concerned about, whether it's a bump on the outside that just suddenly popped up out of nowhere, um, pain medication that's not working, you know, the side effect from a pain medication. They're worried about a certain activity. That, everybody will have a question. And I tell my patients, if you have a question, don't for a second wait. 
just let me know about it. You know, my patients can text me, they can call me. And when you have a doctor that doesn't get back to you, doesn't help you, I feel like that's where the recovery takes a turn for the worse, okay? The anxieties go up, they feel like there's no one out there to help them, and that person feels like they have to do this recovery all on their own, you know? And I think I feel terrible for that person, you know? I am an expert at this surgery. I know everything that could happen and what could go wrong with this surgery. I know what I did in my own surgery too. And I also have the power to give you, or the, not the power, <laughs> the knowledge to prescribe medications, give you tips, you know, figure out what's going on to help you. Um, and I think that's really what needs to happen. I need to coach you along. I I believe I need to take care of everything and you just worry about getting better, okay? Um, really, you know, I, I think that's why this surgery, way back in the, you know, maybe 30 years ago, people actually stayed in the hospital after the surgery. But what do we do these days? People are sent home, okay? And it's not because people are recovering better, it's because Medications are better, but the insurance thing, okay, the cost of care is really what sends people home. Um, that's another big topic of contention, something I, you know, I'm passionate about. We'll talk more about that later. But because we're sending people home, it's not, it's not, usually insurances won't cover a hospital stay after this kind of surgery. That person who decides to have this done needs help desperately needs help and so definitely find a surgeon that you're comfortable with find a surgeon that you can ask like hey if i have a problem with my pain medication i have issues how easy is it for me to get in contact with you you know are you available after hours what if it's saturday afternoon and i'm just i'm freaking out you know because i had surgery friday uh, and then the first day after the surgery, it's just like, you know, everything's crazy. I don't know what's going on. Yeah, you talk to me in the office. Yeah, you explain to me all the things that I should expect. But, you know, like, what's going on with me? That wasn't covered, okay? I, I mean, and I don't even, I can't even tell, like, what's going on there. Like, what the heck is going on? Um, and those are the types of thoughts that I understand people have when, when they go through something like this. And I, I I wish for everybody out there could have a very positive hemorrhoid experience. The recovery is tough for everyone, okay? Very, very rarely do I see people just skate on by like nothing ever happened. Um, the, on average, people should expect this to be very tough, but it can be so much better with such a more positive spin if you have somebody who can help you, a professional who can help you. And so I hope that this video was helpful for you, giving you some helpful tips. Um, but I think that most of all, the most core component is the surgeon, okay? I think reading support groups on Facebook or on social media or even local ones, talking to your relatives who've had a surgery, that can always be helpful, definitely. But in the end, I think that when things get bad enough, the surgeon, the professional who did your surgery is really the best person to go to when you've got issues. So again, the disclaimer is in the description below. I definitely want you to be safe. Um, please research your doctors and I wish you all well. Thank you and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.